tutorial number three. Uh, I did shoot this already and uh, when I actually looked at the video and I watched the video in full frame, uh, the screen was terribly out of focus. And uh, so uh, I just went ahead and decided I'm going to reshoot this and uh, that's kind of my motto in the shop is that if, it's, if it doesn't look right, if it's not something that uh, is pleasing to the eye, then I don't want to, I don't want to release it from this shop. And uh, so that video definitely didn't make it, and so we're reshooting it. So here we are. Um, so what we're going to do, and again, this is a, a real basic elementary uh, draft site lesson, and it's uh, designed to kind of continue on from the previous two, where we talked about some of the commands and uh, command line input and the graphic user interface. And um, so what I'm going to do is I have six shapes here. And these are all uh, basically two inch, two inch, based on two inch and one inch measurement uh, geometric shapes. And I'm going to walk you through how I would lay these out. And so this will be a really short session. And uh, I'm going to try again and make sure that I get uh, that screen directly in focus. And uh, so here we go. All right, welcome back, Doc D in a Dungeon on uh, draft site tutorial number three. And uh, so, as I showed earlier, uh, we have six different objects that uh, I'm going to show you how I would draw them. And doesn't mean it's necessarily the only way to do it because it certainly isn't. Uh, just what I have learned for myself. Uh, so we have four objects. Uh, we've got the square. Um, the right triangle, the uh, isosceles triangle, and then a rectangle. So those are all based off of the same basic shape. And then, uh, so you got a two inch by two inch. Uh, legs are two inch here, um, two inch here, two inch, two inch, one inch sides there, two inch circle, and then a two inch circle with an inner circle that's an inch. So again, uh, this is uh, kind of rudimentary, but uh, what I'm trying to do is to get you into the program actually drawing some basic, simple geometry. And when you break it all down, I don't really care how complex a drawing is, it's all made out of basic, simple geometry. And so this is um, just a, a real simple way to get started, and uh, hopefully this will, you'll find this helpful. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set my uh, current layer and I'm going to go ahead and leave it as vector cut. And so anything that I now draw uh, will be on the vector cut layer, which will be red like the, the Doc D logo up above here. Uh, so do that. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw uh, my very first rectangle. And so uh, I'm going to type because, again, I like to use... Um, the command line input down here on the bottom and so here we go I'm going to type rectangle and if I misspell it please forgive me rectangle yeah of course I misspelled it there we go rectangle all right so now you notice that it gives me uh, some that is not what I wanted at all I don't know what that's doing rectangle there Alright, so it's going to ask me to specify a start corner, and I'm just going to pick a spot in here. I'm going to go ahead and turn ortho on, and uh, so I'm going to start it right there. Now, I could drag and drop a rectangle, uh, or if I look back down here, I have some options. Area, dimensions, rotation, all right, or you know, the, the default is to drag and drop. So I already know what the dimensions are, and so that's the easiest way to get uh, an exact uh, dimensioned rectangle. So I'm just going to hit, go ahead and hit D, which will mean dimensions, and enter. And it's going to say specify the horizontal dimension. Well, it's 2 inches, so I'm going to type 2. Specify the vertical dimension. It's 2. I'll 
press enter and there we have it all right and I don't want it up there so I'm just gonna go ahead and select that and you notice that by clicking on it left clicking on it get highlights and then I've got uh, the little blue uh, dots in the corners okay this let me know that hey you're selected this this object all right and I press enter and now it's asking me for a point of displacement all right and so I do have e snap on and so uh, endpoint and midpoints are uh, active uh, in that, and so that's what it's going to want to give me. All right, so there we go. Now these other shapes are all based off of uh, this rec this square, this rectangle. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select it, and I'm going to use the copy command, C O P Y, enter, and again it's going to ask me for a point of displacement. All right, and again, it's, it's all driven by my eSnap. If I go down here to eSnap, right-click on it, and click Settings, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, this is the first time using this, this type of software. So anyhow, uh, I have endpoint, midpoint, center, quadrant, intersection, and perpendicular. All right, and those are all good, and so hit OK. All right, and I'm just going to do it from the midpoint, and pull it over here. And the copy command uh, will ke just keep going. And so I left click and drop one, and then I pull one over, and left click and drop one, and then left click, left click and drop one. Now I have ortho on, so these are all on the same line, and my only other option is to go down. All right. If I turn ortho off, all right, then I can drag it anywhere, but I, I want to keep ortho on here, and I use ortho quite a bit. All right, there we go. And now I'm done. I don't want to do any more. I'm just going to hit the escape key. And there we have it. All right, so I've got the sides laid out here. Now what I need to do is just go ahead and I can either type line or I can go up here and select line there. I'll just do line. I'll go here and I'll go there. Now notice that even though I had ortho on, the eSnap will override ortho. And so when I get over a point that uh, is good in my eSnap, uh, or it will override the ortho. Alright, so there we go. I essentially have it, but I've got to delete some of it. And so I'm going to introduce the, the trim command, which is very powerful, and uh, you will use it a lot. Alright, so I select everything. I'm going to type trim. And now I'm just going to select the stuff that I don't want. So I'm going to click that and that. And there we have it. And then I'm going to hit escape to escape out of that. Alright. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to do a very similar thing to get the same uh, triangle over here, this isosceles. So I'm going to type line. I'm going to pick this corner. And now, like I said, I, I, I have ortho on, but uh, ortho will be overridden by eSnap. So I'm going to pick the midpoint there, left click, and then I'm going to come over here and click left click. All right, now we're going to use that trim command again, and just trim out the stuff that I don't want, and then hit escape. All right, now I have this, and I just need to basically cut that down in half, so again, I'm going to use the line command, and I'm going to select the midpoint, and I'm going to come across, and hit escape. All right, so one thing about the trim command is that the part that I'm trying to trim must be attached to the overall um, object that I'm trimming it from. And so I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens if it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and trim out that line, and then I'm going to trim out this line. Now this line here is disconnected, and so I will not be able to trim that. And I'm left clicking it, and then it's not doing anything. So instead, what I would do is just select it and hit the delete key, and it's gone. Uh, now let me undo that. All right, so I'm going to try it again. Now watch this. The order of operations uh, does matter in this. So I'm going to type the trim command. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Doggone it. What am I doing here? Ah. Let's start back here. Trim. It's Monday. Happy Monday. 
Okay, so now, this time I'm going to go ahead and select that and trim it out, and then that, and then that, and notice how that, because those pieces were actually connected to the hole, I could still trim all of those. All right, and so there we have it. I have exactly what I wanted. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a circle. All right, and so I can type circle. And then it asks me, you know, hey, where do you want it? Specify the center point. Or uh, I could do a three point, two point, uh, TTR, TTT. Got a lot of different options there. Um, for circle, I normally just will pick the point that I want the center and about right there. And then the default is specify radius. But let's say that I don't want to specify the radius. I want to specify the diameter. So instead, I can hit a D and enter. And now it says, OK, specify diameter down here in my command line. And I'm going to type 2. And there we have it. I have a 2-inch diameter circle. All right. So last piece, I'm going to select that. I'm going to use the copy command. And drop that over here, go over here. All right, and we're good. So the last thing I need to do is I need to put a 1-inch uh, circle right in the middle of that. So, circle, all right, because my e-snap, I have center point turned on, so as soon as I get close to that, the center point will actually highlight, and it'll do it for any of those. All right, and I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to use the default, so I'm going to want a 1 inch, so 0.5 radius, and there we have it. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Talk to you in a dungeon out.